a little bit of prep goes a long way. It was in like the low 30s this morning. So I'm trying to wrap up all like the big outdoor projects that I had going on. And hey, Uni. <laughs> Here comes Uni. <laughs> hey, Uni. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, as you saw before, I was working on painting this chicken coop and I had this one side here where the door is attached to and I was waiting for Glenn to help me take that door off and we finally got that done. So today I'm just going to get this one side of the coop painted. You want to come say hi, Uni? No, don't attack the camera. Come on. Come on, Uni. There's my chicken. Hi, Uni. <laughs> All right, go ahead. You want to go peck around for stuff? Go ahead. project is done well painting is done Glenn got me some organic blueberries and I think I'm gonna make up a large batch of blueberry pancakes and that way I can freeze a bunch of those and it makes a nice quick meal for breakfast I love to have quick meals ready and available pancakes are done and I thought it's worth mentioning that the flour that I use is just fresh ground and it has the wheat bran and everything and it. it's not sifted or anything like that so it does make a much denser pancake but we really like it and honestly all our wheat products that we make flour based products that we make all include the bran I just haven't found a really efficient way of sifting it so I just work with it the only time it really creates much of a problem is if you want to make like fluffy biscuits or cake and things like that then you really got to do the sifting uh, and I'm working on a solution for that so we'll see now what I need to do oh oh and I and I ended up with about 12 meals 12 breakfasts so that's gonna save me a whole lot of time in the morning not having to cook so many breakfasts so we need to get our chicken coops moved today this one over here is where we're keeping the young chickens and then if I walk over here there's the big chickens coop that they have all completely integrated now and hopefully by the time these guys are big enough to kind of take up for themselves a little bit there won't be too much drama because they've been living back here in their coop with the other chickens walking around and getting to know them hopefully it won't be too long and we'll be able to get these guys out here and roaming around in fact I may consider letting them out with me hanging around back here this week all right watch your toes babies All right, got them moved. I'm gonna move the big chickens. Is <laughs> what you're looking for, Oni? Thirsty? Oni? Thirsty?
and I have about 90 pounds of organic potatoes that Glenn got me because we had a pretty sad potato harvest this year and we eat quite a bit of potatoes and I really like to have our freezer and our pantry stocked up as we head into winter so I'll be working on that throughout the winter plus I really like to have a lot of quick meals and things that are just easy to throw in the oven or on the stove that way you know you don't have to cook all your meals from scratch all the time so a little bit of prep goes a long way What is this? Oni? Are you being bad? <laughs> You're trying to come in the house? Oni? I saw you looking in the window. Taking a little break. I've got only 35 pounds left to do out of the 90. And I think I will have enough freezer space to turn them all into breakfast potatoes and fries. And I think I'll just have Glenn get me some more potatoes for canning. But yeah, it's hot in there. Came out here to cool off a little bit and bring Uni a treat. Um, as I've said before, Uni's beak is the top beak is shorter than his bottom beak. And even though I'm working on it, it's gonna take some time to get it to where he can eat normally. And so I like to supplement him with a little bit of meat because he does eat this better than he does like seeds and things like that. So I pretty much hand feed him some of this twice a day, every day, just to keep his weight up because there for a little while his weight was dropping and I was getting worried about him. And in fact, he's due for another beak filing this weekend. So I'm gonna be working on that again. And I think over enough time, I'll be able to improve it a lot, but I don't think it'll ever be 100% right. And I think he's always gonna be a little bit dependent on some type of special feed, whether it's like his food as a mash that he can dig his beak into, or like strips of meat that he can eat easy, so. Let me give him a snack and enjoy this break. Come get your snack. Uni, don't attack my camera. Uni! 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 <laughs> no! No, don't attack it. Uni! <laughs> you can't eat that whole thing. There's no way you'll be able to. It's a big piece. Alright, Erin, I gotta go check the food. <laughs> Finish your snack before the hens come get it. Here. Oh, more of those pieces. I 
could have definitely started another bigger pan. I have like a 15 inch cast iron that I also usually use, but I didn't this time, kind of regretting it because this would have went a little faster. And yeah, you might be wondering like, why not just go buy organic french fries or whatever? It's simply because I just like to process my own food as much as possible. I just, I like knowing what is in my food, you know, and preferably I'd like to have our own potatoes, but you know, that didn't work out so much this year. So just doing the best I can, but at least the processing is one step that I do have control over. So I can at least do that much. And you know, when it all comes down to it, I think it's really good practice to do stuff like this. So, you know, even if it's not with your own produce, um, there again, like if you're somebody that doesn't have your own homestead yet and you're dreaming about it or fantasizing about it, these are things you can do to prepare yourself to gain the skills that you're going to need once you do get your own property and start having your own produce come in. It's easy to start practicing the uh, preparation and preserving of your food before you even have your homestead. The only thing that I hate about doing it this way is the use of the plastic bags. Like I've said before, I really want to get away from plastic and as long as I'm pre-making things like french fries and all that to freeze, I'm stuck with using plastic. I don't see any way around that. So, unless I wanted to just store these in like a root cellar or something like that, I could do that and then make them, you know, on demand. <laughs> but it is really, really handy to have pre-made stuff, pre-processed stuff in the freezer ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna get back to work. And you know what, guys? I will save you the pain of watching me do this all evening. <laughs>